Ladies and gentlemen, coming to you live from my apartment. It's the Rob Sesternino show. Rob, what's going on, man? Yes, Dan, how are you? I am so excited. This is the first time in the history of our lives where the, the, the flip is script. The, the script is flipped. Yeah, I'm ready. How do you feel about it? I'm uh, good. I'm I'm coming in hot. I forgot. I should wear wore my red shirt today. You normally do. You, you got a little. You got a little red plaid in there, so I'm okay with it. A little that. bit. A little bit. So super excited to have you on before because this is probably a little bit different audience than than you're normally speaking to. Can you give people the Reader's Digest of what you do online? Sure. Uh, I podcast about reality TV shows. I was on uh, Survivor uh, a million years ago. And then uh, back in 2010, I started Rob as a podcast talking about uh, a bunch of different uh, TV shows I was watching. But most of all, talking about uh, Survivor, Big Brother, Amazing Race, and uh, all sorts of reality TV on Rob as a podcast. Okay. And so we're going to talk a lot about, hang on one sec. I just got to turn you up. The, the, that's because you do some live podcasts, right? Yeah. You do a lot of live streams, uh, live after the episodes. And when it comes to when you do stuff live, how many, do you ever have issues um, like actually taking feedback from the, the audience and saying like, oh, hey, we can't hear Rob. Does that ever happen? <laughs> um, you know, it, it has happened in the past where we have different different problems. That uh, and lately, I've been using something that's pretty uh, solid. But like, do you ever get feedback and be like, "Hey, we can't hear Rob, so we got to turn him up a little bit." That I that they can't hear me. Uh, so once in a while, yeah, it'll happen. Like when I was doing more stuff with OBS, I was having uh, more of those problems. Okay, <laughs> you just describe what's going on. Mine. I'm gonna turn myself down to get the equal out the audio levels. But okay, so uh, so this is kind of like part. What we're gonna do here, I wanted to bring you on for a couple of reasons. One, I think that people will really enjoy your story, maybe more so than than uh, you know they're used to hearing. And then also. Um, so we're going to get don't into oversell that. my story, Dan. <laughs> so also we're going to get into we just well, let's just start with this. end. On, on the Twitch end, I don't know how familiar you are, but they just released something in the past month or so called Twitch watch parties. And are you familiar yeah. with them? Um, not super familiar, okay. but uh, I can I, it's, I, I can guess what it is. OK, so real quick, if if your audience has Amazon Prime, you can literally watch a season of Survivor perfectly synced up and watch it with your community live on Twitch. So I'm always one to like test and try stuff out. So we just finished watching Survivor season 27, which is yeah. blood versus water. And you are the one of the foremost Survivor experts of all time. And I know for the first time, this was a lot of people watching Survivor and their experience with it. And we had a lot of differing opinions, but what's kind of like the general consensus about survivor season 27 like what's when people think of it what do they think yeah. of so uh S survivor blood versus water i think it's uh a um generally a positive uh view of that season i think people really like it uh you know i'm uh, good friends with tyson who's the winner uh, spoiler alert uh the winner of that season and uh you played a really uh great game in that season i think a lot of people were very nervous about the blood versus water format at the time of like what do you mean you're bringing back you're being bringing back people and their loved ones and uh it was sort of like a weird concept but there's a lot of uh really great game uh moves that happen in that season and i think that people uh just overall have uh really positive feelings about uh season 27. personally like so my survivor history like i watched up until like heroes versus villains and then i kind of yeah. tuned out for probably like 15 seasons but so my like people were really excited about tyson i'm like i kind of don't get it because i saw him in season 40 and i saw yeah. him in heroes and villains but after this season like you kind of get it he's like a very unique personality is he pretty beloved in the survivor community yeah i mean he's a super charismatic guy like i've been places with him and it's sort of like you you get it like he's just like such an easygoing uh person where like you never have a conversation with him that feels forced or strained uh so he's uh super easygoing like that you, i i you know you, you know how this is where there's some people that are like you know that they know everything about the game and they're really but but it's like you feel like that it, there's like a nervous energy uh coming from them like tyson doesn't have that at all and he comes across as like a very genuine person people really like being around him i've been places with him in public where he's like uh, you know just like strangers are like hey bill what's you know what's going on i'm like how do you even know that guy's name he's like oh yeah i talked to him yesterday so 
Uh, uh, not to mention, he's also like a one of the elite athletes in the history of the show. And what was able to serve him so well, where that in the first two seasons he played, he ends up sort of uh, being targeted for that, especially in his first season. He ends up with this injury that ends up where he loses Rachel early on. And so he's less of a threat for that. But then also he has this injury, which he really milks over the course of the season, where his superpower that people believe has been taken away from him. So it's like, hey, oh, we don't have to worry about Tyson as much. He's hurt. We don't have to, he, uh, but uh, I think he really was like playing it up and he wasn't hurt as bad as people thought he was. Okay. So this is the selfish end of the podcast. I got a bunch of questions. Cause I just watched, we just watched 27 for the first time. And I was like, this is an incredible season to watch. Cause there's so many characters and I just want to we'll kind of like, just, just run through. And I want to get like either your viewpoint or the community feedback. The first one sure. I got to ask is, is, is Monica. Cause I'm like, yeah. she's a beast, but she's a beast and everything else doesn't click is that mm -hmm. how come have you ever taught like what was your analysis of her game yeah so uh, yeah monica she's sort of like uh locked into that the you know final three goat position and goat meaning and, you know, was, like the it, bad goat not yeah yeah then okay. not the good not the good not the greatest of all time but uh you know you, you have that uh probably more so on survivor because of the final three and you, you know, she sort of locked into that position, you know, for Jervis and for Monica, it was hard because there was somebody that was always going to be coming back from Redemption Island in that season. So it, you saw that a little bit, I don't, I don't know, uh, I won't spoil too much of season 40, but there was definitely that with somebody was coming back from the edge of extinction. So if you are aligned with the person who's like the big dog, and then it's like, well, I can't, uh, normally in the survivor season, like, you got to take that person out. Well, you give the numbers back to the minority when you take out the big dog because somebody is this, uh, they're about to get another number coming back in. So uh, that was hard for her. She's a, as she says in the final travel council, uh, she's just a neat lady. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think that Brad and Monica, they're, I mean, they're a cool couple. Um, I, I've gotten to talk to them outside of the show. Brad Culpepper, he comes across really poorly in that season, like a lunatic, but he's more of a down-to-earth guy. Uh, that If you watch his uh, se second season, he comes back in Game Changers. Uh, he's uh, much more down-to-earth. Uh, he has his next-door neighbor is Tom Brady now. Really? Yeah. Small world. I was well, I was thinking, like, towards the second half of his edit, it, like, lightened up a lot. Like, the first, the first couple weeks, I mean, they got to paint someone and chop someone yeah. up that way. But, um, okay, and then... Uh, so Jervis, so I don't know if you knew this, and this is like super deep, irrelevant lore, but Jervis and Aris, I met those yeah. guys. We did a charity event, and I'm like, I don't poker. understand. Yeah, uh, it was poker. Yeah. I don't know why those guys didn't work together. Like, at, at I some... think they did. I think that that's where Aris was sort of like uh, got caught up where he's like, oh, oh, I'm good with Jervis. Nobody knows this. Mm. Uh, and then Jervis is like, well, <laughs> not, not, that, not that good. Yeah. <laughs> so. Right. And then he felt the, like he had a deal with Jervis, and then, uh, you know, Jervis, uh, Tyson won him over. All right, and then last question before we get to you is, there was, like, um, a really interesting, like, when we watched this live, the community, and I'm sure I, I probably led the charge a little bit, we were a little bit uh, enamored with Bonham. Uh, you know, like... She, Which one? The, the, the wife. Uh, Laura. Laura. Yeah. And she's in there, and she's kind of, like, you know, just mixing it up, and we're, like... What's the community feel about how she's played the game? I mean, Rupert is not regarded as like an all time great, you know, survivor player. He is uh, somebody who's like, a, you know, a huge legend of the game in terms of like that. He was the biggest thing ever when he played, uh, but, you know, back to back season seven and eight. Uh, but he's not really regarded as like a great player. And then, you know, they, here comes Rupert's wife, Laura, who really is not like a gamer or a strategist. And so she was sort of like over her head. She was also on the tribe with she had because of like what um, ultimately ends up happening where she's on the tribe with all of the um, survivor like favorites. Mm -hmm. So it's like she's there. She's the one like rookie with like returning players. And she's like, uh, you know, overmatched. I mean, she'd probably have been overmatched if she was on with like the family members. So it's not a great fit for Laura. Okay. And then before we get to your story, so if we may do another Twitch watch party, and, and I picked okay. season 27 because I wanted to see Hayden play. Which, you know, I was like, I was... He was great. I was in my element when I'm watching him, like, talking 
at that one time when he forced him to go to rocks. I'm like, that's Big Brother. And then you have Jervis talking trash about Big Brother. I mean, that what to me was like, I love to see that out of him because I think I, I don't, mm-hmm. you know, I remember season 12, but I just remember him just strolling through and getting the win in Big Brother. So yeah. to see him like do that, I was rooting for him. What's his he like very persona impressive. on like, do people want to see him come back or does I, he... I think people would want to see him come back. I mean, he is like a very like uh quiet persona, like off uh screen. Like I really, I used to play in a fantasy football league with him and he'd be like, uh like I, you know, he'd be crazy about fantasy football, but he has like no almost like footprint like off of these shows uh but i'd like r- run into him and he'd be like uh like talking about like the draft and stuff like that so uh he's nuts about fantasy football I- i've said in the past i thought he was the best one time player who didn't win survivor hmm. uh that I-, I think some somebody else has actually uh passed that but i think he's right up there in terms of one-time players who haven't won survivor and especially with his competition he's going up against too like all returning you know not all returning players okay so my question for you is is if the the community were to do another watch party and you know i've missed like the mid section of survivor yeah yeah, yeah. what is the rob sesternino you must watch this you want to watch beast mode cowboy next (laughs) i want to watch the like 27 i thought characters yeah gameplay was just we lucked into picking a great season yeah, so you want to go? Uh, so, have you seen uh, Twenty Eight? Have you watched uh, not, Tony's original season? I've that's not. a really, I mean, that's that's a really really strong one. Uh, twenty five. Uh, What's twenty five? Uh, uh, Philippines. Uh, who's like some standout characters without spoiling? Malcolm. Okay, I've seen yeah. Malcolm. What would I've seen Malcolm Penner. in? Mal- uh, Malcolm also played. Uh, he played Malcolm played back to back twenty five and twenty six. What was twenty six? Uh, Caramoan. That was with Cochran and um, okay. Uh, so. He plays in that season, um, you know, 28, 29 is, an, is the other. If you like blood versus water, they do blood versus water with all new people in okay. season 29. Okay. And so. Uh, so you're like, Dan, I got my, I'm wearing my plaid shirt. You got one choice. Like this is the Rob Sesternino endorsement. This is the yeah. season you have to 28. watch. 28. 28. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But there's a, there's a few good ones you could pick. 28 is Kagayan or no? Kagian, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. All right, so from, and I think I, this was cool to kind of talk to Rob about this because Rob is just spitting these facts off. I, I'm, you don't have sheets around you, like 28, you like, no. he, he's just so knowledgeable about this and it's just not by accident, right? So can you take us back to to how you started what you what you do online? Like, how did you, yeah. like, where did this so all start? I was, um, Basically, I uh, I played Survivor. I, I was like basically I, I had one good run, one not as good run. Uh, I ended up like uh, not knowing what I was going to be doing. I ended up um, making contact with a producer out in Los Angeles who was working with like reality people about trying to get them to uh, like find other projects to do with people who are famous but have no job skills uh so it's like maybe we could do something with these people because it's like you know they that these the networks like they build up these people like uh like every people know who they are and they're famous but now they have no n- nothing to do uh so it, it didn't work uh but that was the idea and that was the company that i worked for it was fishbowl and, right or something like fish yeah, yeah yeah basically yeah that that was the same people that did the fishbowl and so i uh, ultimately uh they went out of business uh, but I stayed, kept working with those guys for a few more years. We made a lot of like web series and stuff like that. But um, back in 2008, that that company ended up losing its funding. And so uh, by, um, you know, I was, at, I was unemployed. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was looking for my next thing. I started doing the podcast. I had nothing going on. It was really a hobby. Heroes versus Villains was starting. But real quick, so, to start a podcast, did that yeah. like, how did that happen? Did you go, go online? Like, oh, podcast. Because 2008 podcast yeah. is not 2020 podcast. Well, I was listening to a lot of podcasts, too. I listened to Bill Simmons, and he had started up his podcast, and I was really into Lost, and I was listening to uh, Lost podcasts at that time. And so uh, I had been listening to them. I'm like, oh, this is fun. I'll, I'll just, like, call up my friends and, and talk. And that's, like, what I was doing in 2009. And then Heroes versus Villains came on, and it was the final season of Lost. I'm like, oh, well, let me just talk about TV. That, that should be the podcast. And so that was where I started. And then, you know, I just uh, just kept going. I mean, nobody was listening then. Uh, but, you know, the couple people I had, my friends on Facebook were listening. And I just kept it going, and I got guests and, uh, you know, I basically have podcasts now. I think this was my 21st season of Survivor that I podcast. When you said no one was listening and you kept going, why? Yeah. Why did you keep going? 
Dan, I had nothing else to do. Uh, that it was fun. It was fun for me, and I, and I liked it. And uh, it wasn't like that. I was like, oh, this is going to be a business one day. It was just that. Oh well, then the people, somebody will hear this maybe, and maybe I'll get a job. Maybe somebody will like, oh, will say like, hey, uh, like that guy should work for us. Uh, he has a podcast. Or really, what it was that. I wanted to go on job interviews and they said like, well, what, it, like, like we have, we see your resume, but what have you done? It's like, well, I also have this podcast and it has a following. And so I've like been working on like, and you have to wear every single hat to when you're, you know, a creator, you know, you're, you're a marketer, you're a, you know, you're doing post-production, you're doing editing, you're booking the shows. Uh, so there's all these different jobs that you have to do that I thought were also like translated to like employable job skills. Okay. And so when you're doing this, what kind of jobs were you kind of, were you hoping that you were looking for to get while you're podcasting? So I had been, you know, um, working in like video production at that time, but I didn't think that people were going to hire me to sort of like direct videos and work in, and work in production. People wanted like, they have their own ideas. They want to produce the stuff, but I thought that where I could get hired was this was sort of like really the social media boom of like uh you know facebook and, and and the early days of twitter and so i was looking for a lot of like social media manager positions okay so then so you're continuing to do this at, at when you're in the early stages how many shows a week are you turning out how much time are you putting into the actual like recordings yeah so I think I would ultimately do maybe one or two podcasts a week to yeah. start out. So it was it was pretty modest in the beginning. Okay. When did you do you remember any time where you kind of got a first spark? Not like when you made it, but when you got a spark like, "Oh, maybe this can be something." Uh yeah, I don't know. Uh, people, I think people were listening and then also like people some of like the cast people like were uh we're, we're checking it out but it really was like a it was not like that we had a point where we had like a breakout it was just like a grad very slow gradual climb for many years uh, is there any like any events or anything you got invited to do or to, to interview on they're like oh this was kind of cool and unexpected that they're kind of respecting this yeah. as a medium uh I think maybe like a year in then when they started, they were doing like the reality rally and they invited, uh, cause I used to do the show with my wife uh, that she used to be my co-host for this stuff. And eventually she's like, I, I got other things to do. Like, uh, like, well, all right, well, I got to go on with that. <laughs> that, you know, we got to keep, keep this thing. I got too many shows to do. And so, uh, they invited us to go and like, um, do like interview survivors, like, uh, at this thing for, this casino associated with the reality rally. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. This is something. Okay. So you went out there, you interviewed people, you come back and are you like freelancing at this time or how are you, you know? You, well, I was um, still, you know, uh, working for the company that uh, like we had some YouTube channels and I was still like producing videos for the YouTube channels. And then um, uh, on the side, also the same people that I had worked with that they were, you know, working on some different freelance jobs. And so like the, the same guy who would, you know, got me to come to Los Angeles would still hire me for things here and there. And he was also in the process of getting like another new startup off the ground. And then I'd go back and, and basically work for that startup over the course of like, uh, basically between like 2012 and 2013. Okay. So at what point was your time being divided so much where it started to not make sense? to not do podcasting full time or was it did your job go away and you're like oh yeah the job went away so 2013 my job went away and i was like at a point where i was doing i was probably working on the podcast like almost like a full time job like 40 hours a week working on the podcast and i'm like i if i go on a job interview somewhere um i have a million things like i can't uh by the way i can't i i can't work wednesday nights or thursday mornings and i need to do be off on um this this amount of time and it turned out to be where um, I was like, this is crazy. Like, I think I just need to go to go for it. Really, like one of the big points that was like a, uh, a shift was that I worked for the company, uh, the startup, and I was working there full time. And then I got an opportunity to host uh, a football podcast that it was uh, with uh, T.O. Uh, so they wanted they had basically this was like a management uh, company. They were working with Carol Owens and 
they wanted me to be sort of like be like the host of uh this podcast with Terrell Owens. Was did you get and a call was, or did you get an email or did you think so it was like I, a prank? I, <laughs> no, I so basically my podcast was on this network and then they they uh and and the guy was a, he was a Big Brother fan and we were podcasting about Big Brother that summer and he was uh like hey we really like the podcast and and you know he thought that I was a good host and felt like hey so we got this show it's gonna, it's going to be Terrell Owens, you and Alonzo Bowden, who's a comedian who was on like a uh, last common standing and he's a really well-known uh, comedian. And, and we want you to sort of like be like, uh, you know, hosting the show and talk about football every week. And I was like, okay, sure. I'm up for it. And I thought this was a really good opportunity. And I went to my boss. And I'm like, yeah, I need like two hours off on Tuesdays uh, uh, to go and film this podcast that I'm with that, you know, is a really good opportunity. And they're like, no, no, you can't do that. Like, uh, what are we supposed to tell people that like are, uh, you know, I, and I think my title was like VP of production. Like we can't just tell people at the company that the VP of production is off doing a side gig. And I was like, well, like, could I take less money and, and like uh, have like a lesser position at the company to, to do this? And I talked to my wife about this and like it was like a, you know, a substantial pay decrease, but I was going to go down to like only being in the office like three days a week. And she was like, yeah, do it. Um, I was like, okay. And I was actually really happy with that arrangement that I got to like work on my podcast, work on my side uh, thing, and then also go and do that. And, and the podcast with Tio was fun for a year, but it didn't really turn into uh, anything that was like a huge thing in my career or anything like that. But it would, that company ended up going out of business by the end of the year. And like that time that I spent working on my own thing ended up being like really very valuable, like probably more so than the money that I would have gotten from staying there and like working for somebody else uh, five days a week. And I don't want to, cause I've, you know, I've met Nicole, we, we've hung out, you know, at that mm -hmm. con we went to, the expo we went to. When you yeah. had that conversation with her, were you surprised? Were you like, hey, I'm leaving this job or a lot of this stability to go do a podcast with Tara you know, my wife, she has always been like super supportive with like the the big stuff. Uh, she'll be like a lunatic about, um, you know, like uh, did I did I use the chicken that she was gonna eat for dinner? And uh, like she'll go like like she'll lose her mind about stuff like that. But like, hey, honey, I lost my job. Or like, hey, do you think I like? She's like, you know, you know, do what makes you happy. So uh, she's like sort of like the big stuff. She takes like nothing uh small stuff loses her mind so uh this is good and bad to it <laughs> so okay so you spend this time you do the podcast with to but that but for you that had to tell you something inside if you're telling your quote-unquote real job cut my hours like yeah. you're pretty much three quarters all the way in or at this point are you all the way in i'm not all the way in but i'm like three quarters uh all the way in and i have to give a lot of credit to you too dan because uh that you were really the person that turned me on to a lot of the like uh business podcasts that i started listening to uh around that time and i think it was probably uh right when uh you had launched the site about the uh getting uh getting on uh reality tv and you were telling me about like uh pat flynn and uh a bunch of the other stuff and i think i had been i'm not sure if i had been listening to Cliff Ravenscraft already mm -hmm. at that time, but that was, that was just like another avenue of like that I ended up doing like uh, during this time when I didn't have a lot going on, uh, I was listening to like a t a anything I could get my hands on about podcasting, about small business, passive income, and like all of these different things that uh, I could like learn about during this time. Like it was a really, really fun um you know, education for me, uh, during that period. That was, I mean, it feels like another life, but just for context, Rob, my wife and his wife, we all went to Las Vegas. There was this thing called blog world expo. And it's funny. My wife brought this up the other night. She's like, Hey, I'm like, Hey, you know, kind of the similar conversation you had with your wife. I'm like, Hey, what do you think about all this stuff? And then like, like, are you surprised? Cause it's going really well. And she's like, mm -hmm. when you were at, when we were at that convention with Rob, she's like, I just saw something in your eyes that I just kind of knew. And so I don't know. I, I don't think that at the time I knew how valuable us going to that conference was, mm -hmm. but it was just, I mean, it's one of those things I look back on. It feels like another world because it was, but you know, I'm glad we had a chance to experience that. I'm glad that it, you know, it helped. And I think, you know, so, so from there, let's get back to you. So from there, the, yeah. your job goes away and yeah. was it a no brainer? Like I'm no, going all in or it, I'm looking for another job. 
it 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 wasn't a no brainer, but it was an easier brainer than than you would think because it was I had no other opportunities, Dan. I mean that that's really the story of my uh, how I got here is that n had anybody else at any point given me a job or an opportunity, I would have taken it. I would have I would have stopped doing what I was doing uh, and and gone on to do something something else. And then, and then they reached a point where I'm like, hey, you know, hey, this is actually uh, going going pretty well. Let me keep let me keep going with this. But like in the early going, like anybody with an opportunity, I would have stopped uh, probably or like done it like as, a, as it would be a hobby. And so that at that point, it was like I, I had no other prospects of a job. So that's really when I ended up starting to go and, uh, you know, I'm going to do this full time. And that was also right around the time that I ended up, uh, the like Patreon had been courting me to, uh, to join, to, uh, you know, put, uh, put offer my podcast, uh, you know, and use Patreon to help crowdfund. Uh, and it was like the perfect opportunity to get that started. And prior to that, so what were you doing for monetization? Because you're putting in 40 hours a yeah. week. It's not like Twitch where someone can sub subscribe and support yeah. you. Just a podcast. So really what I ended up with was the bulk of my earnings was through uh, Amazon affiliate sales where people would like use my uh, link to go to Amazon.com. What is that Robert's link, by the way, for people listening? <laughs> you can still go to robinsonwebsite.com slash Amazon and get the, and go and go to the links and then and and buy stuff through Amazon and they ended up, but they ended up changing that up where there was a point where I lost uh, that and I had I not changed up that um, how did you lose uh, it um, I think that they really were cracking down on like inappropriate usage of it like if you weren't linking directly to a product where I was linking to like there's a million like things that are like the and I really still, still don't even know all of the the fine print on that they ended up then then changing up the program and now it's sort of like amazon influencer mm. as opposed to associate where it was like uh just like straight up like linking and now it's like attached to your like it's supposed to be like influencers can tell people to go to uh so you have to have like a certain like social media following uh to be able to be eligible for that uh which i which i'm set up through but uh it's like the same. website that comes slash amazon it doesn't go directly to amazon it goes to like a landing page on my site and then you have to click the link from there so um but i think at the time like i was like uh you know try like basically like real like really pushing people go to the amazon link and then also youtube uh videos also because your youtube uh, videos we, do well i saw you i mean now you get like you know, anywhere between 20 and 50,000. I know not everyone's a home run, but you yeah. get a lot of views on your YouTube videos. Yeah, so there would be like some, you know, you could you could make some money from the uh, from the YouTube videos, but it really, it's it's not, you know, a lot. It, you know, it's like, you know, uh, you know. You don't have to. Yeah, uh, you know, a couple. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that. Um, so it, so what you were doing. It, hundreds it, of dollars. It, right. it wasn't like, and you're you're not driving around a Lambo. Rob, you know, for people that this is their first time being introduced to Rob, you know, he's a family guy, you know, I like him. He's, he's from the East Coast. We're like similar. We're not out here buying like Rolexes and Lamborghinis mm -hmm. and stuff like that. At least maybe you might be now. I'm, I'm not. But but so, but you're yeah, like, hey, anybody <laughs> follows me, uh, they know all about my Lamborghinis, uh, the collection. <laughs> so, but you're like, okay, hey, this is like, I'm going full time. I got to, yeah. you know, let me do this. So, so you launch your Patreon. And then, so at that point, you're like, now I'm all in. How much time do you give yourself to be like, all right, hey, like it's got a, I give myself six months to make this work or how did you internalize that? Well, the, you know, fortunate thing was that, you know, my wife was always, uh, you know, she was, she was actually, I think she might've been on maternity leave at the time, but she was still uh, had, had a job. My wife is a nurse. So for context, uh, Rob is is quitting his job, or Rob doesn't have a job. He's going full time in podcasting while his wife is pregnant. Yes. So this is not like she, no, <laughs> we had the baby already. Oh yeah, yeah the, 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 the baby, baby was already born. Oh my God. The baby, <laughs> she's on maternity. So there's leave. a lot on the line. Like you screwed this yeah. up. Like you, you know, dominoes are falling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, it was a lot of pressure, so I I couldn't really screw screw it up. But um, like I luckily like people uh the audience responded really well and quickly to the point where uh you know we had like a consistent like uh, Patreon uh following and really it ended up where you know it ended up sort of like really crystallizing the community where um that we started like having like a we had a Facebook group for the patron uh members to to join 
And then it was almost like, yeah, I knew where all like we had listeners. We had like really like rabid fans, but now we kind of had them all in one place. And so like we were able to like really now like, well, hey, we want to accomplish something like uh, boom, like we could be like laser focus our intensity on things. And the podcast ended up really like starting to grow by leaps and bounds because of what we were able to do. So, but ju and just for, I know I'm saying this, but for context, how many years did you make content for essentially free? You know, I know you have Amazon, but it's not, you're not monetizing. Uh, yeah, it, was, really. uh, it was, um, basically like four years. Okay. So four years of just kind of building and just trying to figure it out. And then you're like, okay, now's the time. So then yeah. you launch Patreon. It, it helps you have some stability. And then you said you kind of took the show to the next level. What did you, when you had that vote of confidence from the community, do you remember being surprised or how did you feel when that happened? I was really just blown away that uh, people like uh, talking about like, Hey, we really love this thing. We don't want you to stop doing it. So, you know, we're here, we're here for you. We want to support you. Uh, and so I started like uh, creating more content that was uh, directly for the patrons. Uh, we ended up launching our uh, post show recaps network, which is our scripted uh, TV division of podcasting. We ended up launching uh, reality TV wrap ups, which are podcasts about other reality shows that I'm not a host of, uh, where we cover shows like The Bachelor and The Challenge and The Mass Singer and uh, like a whole bunch of different stuff. And then we have a ton of Big Brother coverage that's also like getting into like the Big Brother live feeds and uh, everything that that's basically that we wanted to sort of like, uh, how, how do we make more of uh, more content that has like the same sensibility as Rob's podcast, but not necessarily like of me hosting more and more shows. And, and this is cause we're gonna get a little granular here. Where did that idea come from? Because like Rob has a podcast is Rob has a podcast, but now it's not just you podcasting. Like, you know, someone like Taryn, like who I've met, yeah. like you, you have, like, where did that idea come from? It's essentially you have an, a network now, right? Yeah. You know, I think I probably looked at people like Bill Simmons and like what he was doing where, uh, that, you know, that, that Bill Simmons, uh, I think, had you know had, had Grantland at the time, which was sort of like, uh, okay, well, here's Bill Simmons, but then here's also people that are talking about the same types of things that Bill Simmons might talk about in different areas, and so that was like the the idea, and I ended up, uh, you know, partnering with somebody like Josh Wiggler, who is uh, a you know super Survivor fan, but also like has like real clout in the scripted TV world, and so. Uh, we ended up we we had pod, I had podcast about uh, the final season of Breaking Bad with Antonio Mazzaro and then Josh, who I had known from uh, his Survivor fandom, uh, that was like, hey, we should do The Walking Dead, uh, and then and that turned into we should do Game of Thrones, and then so uh, we went to like you know all these different big tentpole scripted shows. Hey, how do we do you know the same types of podcasts and do the same types of stuff that we do about Survivor about other types of shows as well. So, and this is just kind of a side note. I, have, do you know who Kate Ward is? I got to introduce you to her. You guys are both like similar be beings in terms of what you guys do. She covers mm -hmm. a lot of like scripted, like um, Real Housewives, that kind of stuff. So okay. I'm sure like I, I got to get introduce you guys. Cause I just think you guys would, you'd learn some from her and vice versa. So you got these sure. 10 poll shows, but my question is to you, because now you have like, I don't know how many hosts you have, but I always see on your Facebook page because I'll see like new shows pop up. I'm like, I don't know this person. Right? I, I don't recognize mm -hmm. them. How do you yeah. go about that process? So it's not, I mean, this is yeah. as corny as I can say without diluting the brand, right? Where it's like. So most of them come out of the uh, community. And so I do a lot of shows that are talking to people on the Facebook shows where, you know, people, people call in and I, I do, I do a ton of like shows where I'm like talking to the talking to the different fans and so uh whether it's from twitter or like people that are guests on the shows and so i think you get a sense of like who has it and who doesn't have it pretty quickly and so I, and just because I, I met taryn in 2012 and i don't think yeah. i think i might have told him the story but it was at a gaming convention and like i was really really early into like the gaming scene and like i met him and he's like, oh, hey, what's up, Dan? It wasn't like, hey, I like your Twitch channel. It was kind of like a different kind of look. And he didn't really tell me it was like a Big Brother thing. But I met him early on. And, yeah. And so I knew he was like into Big Brother or whatever. But what about him did you say like 
he's going to be great at this when you made that decision to bring him on. So uh, we were looking for more people to cover the live feeds and he had made uh, a video where like uh, the, it, this was, I think that the time of big brother Canada three. And so, and, and they had like um, he, he copied the style of like the profile video for the big brother Canada contestants that they had. Uh, and, and it was like, this is hilarious. This is a great idea. And, uh, you know, you, uh, you just seen instantly uh, he had and he's so much better now than he was. And not to say he was bad uh, at the start, yeah. but, you know, he's just like the most like uh, like consummate professional when it comes to, you know, being able to cover all this stuff. And you know, people joke and call him the robot, uh, but he is just so analytical in terms of how he's able to pick apart everything that happens. And, and you know, where where we have him is uh, that he's really like the lead anchor on all things big brother and he's able to cover the live feeds and really that uh most people like the big brother live feeds dan i, I say it's it's kind of like the like uh you know like in the clockwork orange where they make people like watch the stuff it's and, a like, grind people people lose lose uh <laughs> their you know what try like over the course of the summer and somehow like taryn is able to stay like even keeled not lose it you know uh because i think there's like some cognitive dissonance that goes on to have to be able to watch the big brother live feeds where uh you watch the big brother live feeds and then you watch the show and it's different and it's like that's not what happened <laughs> what, what, what is it? I, I know i know i saw it uh and and it's it's an exercise in like okay i'm just like i'm just taking it all in and <laughs> and, and, and and he's able to like separate okay this is the live feed this is the show. And, and I hear from people like, hey, I don't even watch uh, the big the live feed. I just listen to like Karen tell the story. And he does it uh, in such a um, you know eloquent way where he has like copious notes from the entire day and like tells you the whole story of what happened. And it, he does an, uh, an incredible job. We're and very it's, lucky and it's to, like non-biased, right? Like that's my that's my only qualm yeah. with some big brother coverage. It's like and they're most of them are gone. But it, he, like he I, does as as good of a job yeah. as possible. That, that, that he'll still get emails like, "No, <laughs> you just hate my favorite person." And I get it, it's hard to do, but there's very few like Twitter accounts because I don't watch the live feeds, but I like to stay updated. Where it's not like, "Oh, this person did this move and they're an idiot." Or it's mm -hmm. just like I just want the news. But from talking about being a good host, one of the things I always admire about you is is you're able to bring people on your show. Everyone likes you. You. You walk an interesting line where you can poke fun at people without it being malicious, but like you can get people to laugh. But if there's like something like even just when we were talking about, I don't know, a moniker, so that you can say something without yeah. it being offensive, but still like where for you, how did you develop that? And how do you approach a show? Because if someone's on Survivor, for example, and they're like acting like an idiot and like mm -hmm. they make dumb moves and you still, but you bring them on your show and you interview them, but you don't just like turn a blind eye to that. How do you, in your head, how yeah. do you process that? Well, th thank you very much for, yeah. uh, for that. I, I appreciate well, it's it. Well, true. Uh, so it, I have to say that it wasn't always that way. Like I used to, like in the early days of the show, uh, I think I would just be like, hey, I'm just saying, I'm just saying whatever. I'm just trying to make the person at home laugh. And I'll say, you know, whatever. I don't care. Uh, and, you know, it's very embarrassing then. It's a bad feeling where then the person that you were talking all this crap about, they listen. And then you run into them. And it's and it's just like, hey, why, why are you such a, a jerk? It's like, ah. I feel really bad. I shouldn't have said that. Do you, and, do you, do you have a good story you could share where maybe the, the person thought you're a jerk and then you like apologize or anything? Um, or anyone that stick I out? Think, I, I just say it, uh, it's, it's more like that, you know, it, it, then it hurts like when you want to interview that person and then they don't want to talk to you. And, and um, you know, as like, a, you know, it, it does, it takes a real uh, effect on people you know, when they go on these shows and they, and then if you're also one of the, one of the people that's like really trashing people. And I have to say that, um, you know, in, in big brother, this is harder because that, um, I, I tr cause I treat survivor like, Hey, this person's probably listening to the show. So, you know, I sort of kind of treat it like a roast where you don't want to say anything that you were going to say on the show that you wouldn't say if that person's in the room. So you try to find a way to like, how do I say this where, you know, I'm getting the point across, but it's not like, uh, I'm not being be a horrible a jerk. jerk. Uh, with big brother, they're kind of locked away in the house. It's a <laughs> little bit, you know, you kind of forget. And it's like, ah, by the time this is all over, they'll forget about this. Um, but 
you know, now, now more uh, like what, what happens is like the, the people on the outside, they're taking notes. They're like, wait till, uh, wait till Jimmy gets out of the house. I'm going to tell him what Rob <laughs> said on this day. Uh, so that's, that's still uh, trickier, but uh, you know, it's, it's hard to do, but you know, I, tr I just try to stick by the rule of, Hey, um, you know, this person is, is probably listening to this. So let me try to, you know, uh, not go for the jugular here, uh, when I can. And a lot of times, uh, we're, we're able to do that, like with sound clips, uh, where, you know, instead of me making fun of what somebody said, you know, if I'm playing the sound <laughs> clip of what they said, like, you can't get mad at me. Like I'm just playing the sound that the sound that you said on the show and talking about that. So that that also helps, but I but I what I do think that is you know unique about uh, what we're able to do is that we have a platform, and now it's like, hey, like, do you feel like you're misunderstood? Like, let's talk about it. Like, I want I want to hear your story. Also, like, tell me, like, tell me about why people have a misconception about you, and like, help us understand. I think the audience likes that too. Have you ever had one of those when you're talking to the person? You don't have to. Put them on blast when you're like, all right, this person had a misconception about them, and then you had you're like, no, they're proving the misconception. Well, well you know, everybody <laughs> thinks that they got a bad edit, you know, and some people did, and yeah. some people like just like uh like oh no, this person really is uh, a crazy person, and so okay, sure, 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 but you know, I, I think that the edit might have actually been been right on some of these people. I want to backtrack for half a second, and was there a moment when you went from like wrote from making fun of people? To taking the roast mentality was there something that happened like did someone say something or did you just like i didn't want to do uh, this anymore you know i i feel like that like uh like brendan and rachel like we used to like really make fun of them and then i met them and they're like uh super nice they're great people. yeah they're like uh, yeah like brendan's the nicest guy ever rachel's super nice and i'm like uh like like why were we like uh making fun of these guys so much and the and, and look, they gave a lot of material uh <laughs> back in back in the day but you, th that was uh that was you know another one uh like uh big jeff uh super nice guy also and we used to make fun of uh him. and we still th do you know uh so uh dan w Tell me, would you rather go into the house and would you rather fight one giant mosquito <laughs> or and let him kick your ass or would you rather have, uh, but you know, like uh, I'll still do like impressions, but uh, there's a lot of people that you you meet them and it's just like, oh my god, I feel like such a such a jerk. Uh, this person is so nice. <laughs> well, that's what like, and and I feel like that's why you've stood the test of time, and at least that's why like I enjoy watching you is that. I know I'll watch you and I'm never going to like feel bad about listening to you and like piling on. And it's funny, like it, it even happens recently. I'll get a request to go on someone's podcast. And I'm like, man, I know this is just going to be like, it's not something positive. It's not like, it's not entertaining mm -hmm. and it's going to be like bashing someone or they've bashed me in the past. So I'm definitely not going on. But I think for you to be able to take that and then still take that stance and walk that line and make it entertaining, I think it's, I mean, it's a testament to what you've been able to do. So what I want to ask you now is like, is you've been going now full time for six years, five years, six years S now. Yeah. Six years you've done. I know you did like a massive pot. What was the massive number podcast you did? It was like X hundred anniversary. What, what was it? Was it? I think I just I just had three thousand podcasts on Robin's <laughs> podcast. I actually forgot to commemorate it. I, I did a big podcast. We had our ten year anniversary on February twelfth. It was this day of the Survivor Forty premiere, so we had a really big party. And we had like a red carpet and everything, and uh, I ended up doing like a whole long podcast that was like three and a half hours on like the history of like ten years of Robin's podcast, and then that was like podcast like twenty nine forty, and I'm like, oh yeah, I got to celebrate like three thousand, and then. Uh, I just like it came and went. I I totally forgot to do anything for three thousand podcasts. So three thousand podcasts. I got a couple questions for you about that. On Rob is a podcast, and there's been more on like Pusher recaps and stuff like that. So Rob, just his just the the flagship show, and I'll call it the flagship. I don't know yeah. if you will. But so three thousand podcasts. Do you what do you do when you get to a point of when you get sick of talking, or do you not get to that point? 
I don't know if I get sick of talking. I mean, there's always somebody that I want to talk to or something that I want to talk about. Like, I, I might get sick of talking about a, a specific subject, but I never get sick of talking to. Um, it's it's more like the subject. Like, there might be like a specific season of Survivor, like season 39 of Survivor. Uh, skip that one with the community dance. <laughs> uh, that was not one that was really celebrated. And, and was there that were the, times was where that with the Boston Rob and Sandra? Yeah, yeah, statues. And, and and that was a really hard season to podcast for a lot of different uh, issues, but but I never get tired of talking to the people, uh, and, and um, you know not just the survivors, but also the people that we have that are the other hosts that I get to that I get to play with. So everybody is you know really fun, but sometimes we run into subject matter that is uh, not as fun. And I but I do other stuff that's not just reality. I do a show called Robin and Kiva Need a Podcast where I have a wheel of podcast ideas. Uh, that I do with a co-host and every week we spin the wheel of uh, podcast ideas and then do whatever comes up on the wheel. And then the second half of the show is going through new submissions for things to put onto the wheel. So that's something that like, you know, I never get bored with doing that kind of stuff. What would be an example of something on the wheel that's completely random? Um, let's see. Uh, what do we do that? Like, uh, we did a, 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 bracket of brackets where we did like a bracket of what was going to be the next week's podcast which was going to be like a bracket uh i mean we've done so many different like ran we did one week where we did like we played the oregon trail uh we did you know so uh, like we we do a lot of like random episodes of television um and, st and stuff like that so it's v it's very fun and very interactive all right so here's a million dollar question and i'm not i, I like to i like to bring sunshine to the matter not clouds yes. but you know, there's going to be a point, you know, things are going to, of course, you know, get better. But there's going to yes. be a point where there's a, we're already, there's no sports. We're yes. running out of material for, you know, Survivor, Big Brothers mm -hmm. up in the, like, what is, what's your, like, contingency plan right now about what, what do you have going on when there's no yeah, TV? So, well, right now, uh, what I'm really working on tracking down is a lot of interviews with the players that played in season 40. I think people are really dying to hear from all these different legends of the game. Yeah. So that's sort of the uh, short term plan. One of the things that we're going to be doing is that with that same sort of idea of like uh, a random ideas for podcasts, we're going to be going back through the time machine and going back and going to different weeks in survivor history and, and rewatching not seasons but specific episodes like and we iconic. do a thing called yeah. yeah and we do a thing called the wand off dan which is a song parody contest about the uh the episode that just went by that's sort of like how we close out the survivor week and so we want to let people do wand offs about different uh episodes of survivor and survivor history and so we're going to do a lot of stuff uh we're going to kick that off with the it's the 20 year anniversary of survivor on may 31st so that's going to be the first one of those that we're going to do and we're going to have like basically like theme weeks where the other podcasts are going to like uh talk about like we're all, all the podcasts on the network that do survivor are going to try to talk about the same episode uh for for a week at a time and then you know, we'll also like, uh, Dan, are you familiar with the Brant Steel? That's like the online simulator. Yes, yes, yes. So, so uh, we we have fun with those. So we'll we'll make up some content. We'll do interviews uh, still. And then we're hoping that, you know, things get back to um, like some semblance of, uh, if not normalcy, at least like uh, we'll have some content coming up in the fall dan have you heard my idea for uh survivor for the fall i have not okay i've been pitching it look that they do all the survivor seasons in fiji i think it may be tough to get to fiji they're saying they we want to do survivor in the fall i've been pitching the idea of a domestic survivor season okay. set somewhere in the southwest okay. they get on some sort of like a dude ranch or something that has like a like a acres of land maybe someplace where they shoot westerns and we do survivor wild wild west cowboy theme frontier life dan what do you think could this work in, in my head and this is not disrespectful to the third season of survivor but that the setting for me of survivor three which was africa correct sure i killed it right i don't know what it was but it, it could there be a river? What if there's a river? River? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of on there. The only thing I, I need, though, I, I mean, I would need a Jeff Probst 
cowboy there's what's his what's his role in the hosting like yeah he's, well so he's he... wearing a cowboy hat okay okay tribal council is sort of like set like in like a middle of like a ghost town okay okay uh we have like maybe like saloon doors that you enter to go into the voting booth torches or no torches what's in oh, place you got torch you gotta have torches but are they uh, like maybe... lanterns like your land oh that's interesting uh yeah but maybe like jeff probably has like some sort of like blacksmith like uh th <laughs> apparatus to put the torches out uh look i think it would be you could do this uh, i think that it, that uh people just want to see survivor and if it's not exactly perfect you know is the nba talking about a perfect way to end their season no it's like we love basketball we want to get it we want to finish our season and survivor wants to be on in the fall uh like okay well how do we make this happen well i think what's interesting is to tie back to you know when i was watching you talking about hey there's no tv coming out like there's no panic like you're just innovating right like you're like hey we're we'll figure it out yeah, yeah. And, and i think that's refreshing to hear it's like if people if there was a survivor you'd call is it is the the theme wild wild west is that what the official stamp would be for you that's my pitch okay. survivor wild wild west i was gonna call it old west people said rob don't call it old so, people don't want like that but can you imagine if that were announced people are going to be more fired up than just a normal season when the nba if they say hey we're going to play in disney world just the like pent-up excitement mm -hmm. i think people have for just any like sliver of normalcy i think you know would be amazing and, and i, I well, don't think you're too far off on your idea yeah and, and just in to go back to survivor 40 during this time i mean when when everything in the world was affected and everything was shut down that i heard from so many people in in this space that it was so nice wednesday night that was my, my one hour that was that was unaffected that was normal and uh like i've heard from people like uh like it's very it's so sad that we don't have that right now uh that we don't have that when wednesday at eight i knew what i was doing it was an exciting season it was a great outcome and it was like uh the one one thing that just felt like uh it, you you could like uh didn't have to think about coronavirus for an hour yeah no and and i think like it's perfect storm it was i mean that drew me back in a survivor this season did and you know i haven't watched yeah. a full season survivor in forever but speaking of 40 as we kind of wrap things up here do you think without spoiling do you think the person who won 40 do you think they are the best of all time if not who do you have as uh, for lack of a better term, a six shooter pointed at your head who, and you got to say the best of all time. Yeah. So w the way that I would frame this debate is that I think the person that played this game, uh, I think that they played the most complete game I've ever seen. And so because that they were capable of turning in the best all time game, I have to say that person, even if they had other games, that that weren't uh, that that were very bad did not go great like if you have like if we have some sort of like a world record that was broken like if uh like uh and again i i don't know uh i'll get my sports metaphors like but if uh usain bolt like runs like the fastest time ever like are we gonna be like yeah but he had another race where it took him 16 minutes to run the 40. like yeah i guess so that day that day he did bad but look at this. This is the best one we've ever seen. So I think you have to say that person is the greatest of all time. So if what, they did the best game, then they were the greatest of all time. So when you're looking at you know, for the, the Rob has a podcast, Mount Rushmore, you're not looking at history. You're looking at single greatest performance or well, single greatest performance in the toughest competition. So I think sometimes it, so when uh, you know, somebody like uh, has like a more clear cut resume, like uh, somebody might have in uh, in Big Brother of, you know, uh, somebody like yourself. Like we don't have that in Survivor. Mm -hmm. We don't have that person that has, uh, you know, uh, that exact. Rob, right. you don't have to butter me up. I, look, I know when I when Rob has a podcast comes on, I know I'm sticking my flag with Taryn because he will defend me. Rob, I'm like, I, I don't know what's going to come out of Rob's mouth today. I mean, I'm uh, I'm no, it, um, I, I feel like that, uh, you, I mean, when we, no, 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 we don't have to go down this road uh, that. So, uh, I mean, I, well, we, we could, we could, uh, explain Taryn, you know, Taryn would die for Dan, uh, <laughs> that, that Taryn, Taryn likes Dan like way more than he likes me. Uh, that, that's, uh, he would, you know, do anything for Dan. So, um, Okay, as as we wrap up here, Rob, 
what uh what what do you for you and and you know how you feel about what you're able to do what is your end game like can you see yourself doing this until you're 80 like do you i don't think anybody wants to see me do this till i'm 80. <laughs> But I mean, I love what I get to do. It's it's very fun. I'd love to I'd love to keep doing uh, what I'm doing, but at the same time, I would also like to continue to you know produce uh, content with other people as the uh, like uh, you know figure out you know how, how do we build more Rob as a podcast? How how do we how do we take other talented people and get them set up uh, with you know their own podcast community, and then also be able to you know monetize those podcasts for them help them build their brand and then continue to, you know, work. I, I never want to stop podcasting myself, but I do think that ultimately where I need to get to is, you know, continuing to help other content creators that are on, on the way up. Got it. So you're like finding, essentially finding and helping and coaching and creating and putting in the franchise system more Terrence. That's, that's kind of the... Yeah, I mean, we have so many, so many different, you know, talented uh, people that we found over the years. Uh, I'd love to be able to, and, and not just in the reality TV space, but you know, helping people that are, you know, other podcasters be able to that might not be as closely as connected to this world as like uh, other stuff that's uh, on reality TV. And that's one of the things that I didn't want to go without saying this, but I was trying to think. I said it last night during a live stream. You've heard of like five degrees of Kevin Bacon. What is that called? Six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yeah. I imagine everyone in the reality TV world is one degree from Rob Sesternino. I bet there's no one on this earth that is, you have the, like, if you want to, is, let me ask this. Is there anyone that you have not interviewed that you are not like, oh, it'd be nice or anything, but you would like, you die to interview them so, in the reality TV space? Okay. Uh, Sri is somebody that i would love to you know sit down and do uh a real a real deep dive with uh what's that's, what's been a roadblock to there uh she doesn't seem to want to do it okay. uh you know not everybody wants like i just i, I was so ha happy a couple of weeks ago I, I did like um two and a half hours with ozzy who is somebody who uh i think a lot of people have like a lot of misconceptions about him uh, and his game and what he's about. And I think he's a really interesting guy. And I was just so happy to have that kind of conversation to, um, you know, be able to like get, get into everything with him. Uh, and so that was nice. And, you know, the one that, the one that, you know, I've always wanted to do, but will never happen is, uh, Will Kirby. And what's his, uh, what, what's his deal? I don't know. I feel like that the more, the, if I if the more I would like, uh, I have to like ban him from the pie. If I say like, hey, I will, you know, it's it's all playing games with him. I think uh, you you're know. telling me, if you man. Say, if you say you really want to interview him, then I think he doesn't want to talk to you. Uh, so I'm gonna say that I'm texting I never him right now. Him. Yeah, I'm just saying Rob no, has he, a podcast. I, I, I don't think, but you know, I think if it was like, hey, you want to like a podcast about like this movie, I think he would love to do that. But I just feel like that. Uh, he just doesn't want to go there. I don't think he's that has that kind of interest in talking about Big Brother it's, uh in that in that way. He's an interesting cat. I think I think that that's a fair way to say it. Um and then have you interviewed Richard Hatch? Yeah, many times. Okay. I, I think he's you know in, in within the gameplay world it's a fascinating individual I didn't, did you oh he's a super interesting guy i mean he's always gonna have something that's uh that's interesting to say he has sort of like a um you know it's a shame that they couldn't have a way to get him out there for season 40 but he has a very strained relationship with the show and then last question is there anyone on 40 that you're like i cannot believe this not take someone off of it but i cannot believe this person wasn't on there or they I would have loved to have seen this person on that cast if they added two more people so uh Tina is somebody who I feel like that uh you could have figured out a way to get her I mean I know you just watched her in blood versus water yeah. I mean she had such a good run there I mean and she's up for it she's a classic person I think that people like really love the uh idea of the old school players like it's like uh, nothing against the new school players but it's like we just saw them and I think it's so it's not just that um you know that people that they're so great but there's nostalgia for like these uh you know early seasons of the show and if you had the opportunity to do it uh that would have been great and uh people you know uh, i think really wanted to see the sepia also as another is another yeah. one earl people would have loved to have seen uh be out there so there's definitely uh people todd i know people love to, to have seen todd uh you know 
Mike, Mike Holloway, somebody who like what I really wanted to be out there with these guys. So but it's hard, you know. I'm sure you've heard this a lot, but that's what drew me into this season. I knew we were getting Boston Rob. I knew we were getting Sandra. And to me, that was yeah. like, but that was enough. But to me, that was like a gateway drug to be like, all right, now I know who Nick is. Now I know I liked Wendell. Like there's all these people. I'm yeah. like, now I got to go see how they did it. Hey, that's what drew me back into Heroes versus Villains was that like, hey, oh, I know, I know Rob and Rupert and Jerry and Colby and uh, all these old school players who are uh, back from Heroes versus Villains. Okay, final, final, final question. I know you have a lot going on. You know, you have all the podcasts. Let's not get carried know. away. Yeah. <laughs> Would you play one more time? I, I'm open to it dan but uh i need to figure out like how do i not get voted out first uh like i do like the idea of the, what appeals to me is like being a ponderosa i like i like that but i don't want to go on a trip they take everybody to go on a vacation i don't want to go on a vacation like i'd be ha like i'd really be very happy if i could just be like the first juror and then be at ponderosa for three weeks but um i just i don't even i, I feel like that people would just like want to vote me out right away because they say Hey, oh, he knows everything or he knows everybody. So let's just get rid of him. So uh, I haven't wrapped my head around that. And it's also like just in terms of like my business, like uh, of what I do for a living, it would be a major while like, you know, the advertising would be great. Uh, on the other hand, but would the, it? like uh, I, I think does it outweigh I think it, it would be. You know, does it that way? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, how much would I have to like shut down what I'm doing? Uh, how much would like, would they let me have like a fill in host of like, basically, would we have like, um, you know, have any number of people be hosting Rob as a podcast talking about Survivor, uh, like in my absence, like how long do I have to be a lot of they shoot these seasons like a year in advance? Uh, how much would they put my stuff on hold? So uh, it is a lot of is a lot of issues. It's complicated. And then for real, last, last question, with all your survivor knowledge and everything, you know, you watched and experienced both as like a host and player, if you were to coach someone or just give them some advice and say, hey, maybe they've been on another reality TV show, but they wanted mm -hmm. to do well on Survivor, what would you tell them I, to focus you know, on? I, I mean, I don't know if you ever get asked this question from other people like, like, hey, Dan, can you teach can you teach me how to play Big Brother? I'm like, not really. Uh, <laughs> you know, you're either good or you're not. Uh, there's not like watch the seasons. Uh, there's a little bit you can learn, but the, you know, you can't really teach somebody who's bad at one of these games to, to how to play and be good. You know, you can do like uh, you could do some exercise. You could try you could train a little bit, um, but. I mean, you kind of like you're almost a fully formed product when it comes to, you know, being uh, ready to go on one of these shows or not. Uh, you know, watch watch the old seasons uh, you know, you could learn you could learn a little bit more of the strategy uh, of of the game. But but that's not the most important thing. What is the most important thing? I think it's the most important thing is just like uh, how how you interact with people, like how people like if you are sort of like a sketchy person and people don't like talking to you or you're not interested in people, um, you know, you're not going to be able to, you know, function, you know, uh, you know, pretty, it's it's mostly personality and the personality is going to unlock the strategy. So you can learn the strategy stuff. You can learn about like vote splits and and, you know, all the different advantages that are out there. But if you don't have good relationships, that you're not going to be able to do anything. That's fair. So, so Rob, as we for real wrap up. Can I up ask here. you one question, Dan? Sure, sure. Now, would you ever consider playing Survivor? I'll tell you what. I don't. I don't know what it was, but I'll just. I'm gonna give you just a really quick Reader's Digest. Played Big Brother the first time. I'm like, man, there's something in me. I got to do it one more time. Like, there's yeah. a fire. I'm like, okay, sec two times. I'm like, I'm good. Like, I, you know, like. It's like, hey, you climb the mountain once, you climb it twice, you're good. I'm like, okay, I'm good. I'm and then something about season 40, man. I'm not saying there's a fire. I'm not. I'm saying, mm -hmm. but but you know how like they put down the husk and there's a spark and some smoke. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say maybe there's like a 41 percent chance that I would consider 41, doing. Okay, 41 percent chance that you would consider. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. So, but with that being said, as thank you so much for sharing your story. It was amazing to catch up with you. I'm just so happy for all your success and you're able. I mean, I think if anyone's listening to this and have never, you know, they're not familiar with you, I think one thing they'll take away is like you genuinely seem like a happy person because you get to do what you enjoy on a day to day basis. So, for people that want to be a part of that enjoyment, 
where is the best place they can follow you? Tell us about your shows, where they can tune in. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Uh, you go to robinswebsite.com or look for Robins Podcast wherever you uh, get your podcast. I'm very lucky. I, lo I love what I uh, get to do. We get to have a lot of fun uh, talking about all these different shows. And uh, it's been, you know, the, you know, great joy of uh, my uh, professional life that I'm able to, you know, do crazy stuff and uh, do impressions and, um, you know, have fun talking about these shows and talk to all these interesting people like you. And uh, it's a, it's, it's a real treat. Well, Rob, as we for real wrap things up, wh when it's all said and done, uh, what do you see your final sign out as on your last Rob has a podcast? Do you have like coming, never uh, coming to you live from my apartment ever again? Um, I have not thought about that yet, Dan. Uh, I guess we can work, we can workshop that. So you wanted, what's, what's the opening of the last podcast? Now here's the guy who's never going to podcast again. What's the last again. sentence you say on the, your last podcast? Oh, never say, coming to you live? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think, I, I think it'd just be like, a, you know, Thank you to thank you for spending all this time with me and letting me get to do uh, what I got to do. Uh, you know, hope you've had as much fun as I have. Uh, take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs> I think that's. I, I think it would be you know simple. I, I mean, I think that you just want to. Um, you know, I, I, I'm so lucky that people have gotten wanted to spend all this time with me, and it's been such a you know wonderful experience to get to to know all of these people and. It's just a, a, a really wonderful relationship uh, with the audience. And I think that that's uh, basically how I would end it. Uh, should I be so lucky to be able to decide how I want to end things? Well, Robert, thank you so much for coming on, man. I look forward to keeping in touch with you. Good luck in all the upcoming seasons and everything. And, and we'll be watching you and, and rooting yeah. for you, man. And congrats on everything that you're doing too, Dan. Thanks, Robert. I, I appreciate it, man. And, and uh, go Jets, right? <laughs> that's, that's right that's right j-e-t-s if we get some football watch out everybody sam darnold year three all right thanks for coming on rob i appreciate it you got it thanks right, dan we'll see you